It's the season debut of Insider Trading. They are the Insiders, Darren Dreger and Chris Johnston. Gentlemen, NHL training camps are opening up across the league this week, and there are some big-name restricted free agents still waiting for contracts. And one of the biggest names out there right now, CJ, is Jeremy Swayman. At last word, Swayman and the Bruins were miles apart on a new deal. Any updates on that front? Well, what I can tell you is of early Tuesday evening anyways, it was described as status quo in these talks. And I think the timestamp is important because this is an hour by hour situation with the camp opening in Boston on Wednesday. Obviously, a lot of urgency trying to get the number one goaltender of the Bruins signed. And really, this goes back a long time. They've been working at this file for, for quite some time, trying to find agreement on what I think has been focused on a long-term deal. You have to wonder if they can't quite get there, if they can't bridge that gap, maybe they find something a little shorter to, to, to get to a solution here. But certainly, this is a big one around the league. Another situation worth monitoring is in Detroit, where Moritz Sider, the defenseman for the Red Wings, remains unsigned as well. The talks there had been focused on an eight-year contract, the maximum allowable just as his teammate Lucas Raymond signed. But it sounds like now it's going to be something a little shorter. And the reason for that is the Red Wings have been reluctant to pay anyone more than the $8.7 million per year that Captain Dylan Larkin gets. I think one way maybe to get Cider into the mid-eights or somewhere below that number is to do her sex or seven-year deal. And so look for that as they look to get him signed and in camp here as soon as possible. Yeah, and look, guys, when you're looking at top restricted free agents, more often than not, it's unnerving and the negotiations can be delicate. And unlike Cider and Swayman, uh, I'm looking at a couple of guys who are looking more so at bridge contracts. And I'm going to start with Cole Perfetti and the Winnipeg Jets. And yeah, this has been a delicate on and off again type of negotiation between the Jets and the camp that represents Cole Perfetti. I know that Perfetti feels great. He had an excellent offseason of training, and he's looking forward to working for Coach Scott Arneal. But there's a significant gap in this negotiation, and unless something changes in the very near future, then it's pretty obvious that Perfetti is going to miss some time. As for Thomas Harley and the Dallas Stars, again, angling towards a bridge contract. It's hard to imagine the Dallas Stars going into the season for an extended period anyway without this six foot four defenseman as part of their nucleus on that back end. He is a key piece. Andy Scott represents Thomas Harley, says ongoing discussions there. He had 15 goals and 32 assists last year, so I like the position of Thomas Harley, but the negotiation isn't complete yet. Well, a number of teams are looking inside their organization to take care of matters in-house with restricted free agents. Other organizations, like, for example, the Columbus Blue Jackets, are looking for help outside the organization, CJ? They are, and look, they've already brought in veteran James Van Riemsdyk over the weekend after that signing. Don Waddell, the Blue Jackets general manager, said he still wants to get at least one more forward in-house, and the sense is that the Blue Jackets are willing to be creative in how they do that. I don't think it will necessarily come in the form of another UFA. I mean, they'll look at PTOs, they'll look at the waiver wire, and I think they're also being pretty active on the trade market, trying to see if maybe there's some situations around the league, maybe some younger players that could come available from other teams as they work through their own roster issues and try to get cap compliant by opening night. But the sense is the Blue Jackets will be patient here and uh, they may end up getting this, this forward by trade versus the traditional route and just signing one. Some international hockey news. It was a couple of years ago the Canadian Hockey League canceled its Super Series with Russia for obvious reasons there. And now the CHL is looking at another international showcase event, but this time dragged south of the border. Yeah, and it involves three entities here, Gino. You're talking about the three leagues that make up the Canadian Hockey League. So that's the OHL, the Western Hockey League, and the QMJHL. The National Team Development Program under USA Hockey. And, of course, the National Hockey League. The NHL was looking for another vehicle, if you will, to showcase top draft eligible prospects. And we know that the CHL has that in abundance. Likewise, with the National Team Development Program. So it's expected, not official just yet, that the NHL will pull its 32 clubs to get their list of let's say the 15 top forwards the top nine defense and the three goalies they'd like to see and then the staff for the Canadian Hockey League and the development team in the U.S. will pare that down to 20 skaters and two goalies so two games one in London one in Oshawa November 26 27th and I know a lot of NHL GMs looking forward to them. 
We all love the international hockey. They are insiders, Darren Dreger and Chris Johnson, with the season debut of Insider Trading.